It is 5.30, so let us, are we ready? Yeah. Are we? Okay. Let's call the meeting to order. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adoption of the consent agenda is our first item to undertake this evening. We have item A, appropriations, and then uh, all the cereal malt beverage licenses. There's 11 under item B. Gentlemen, what would be your pleasure on the consent agenda? I'm okay with it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. fine. I'd okay. make a motion we adopt the consent agenda as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, we're ready now for public hearings. Um, a is a public hearing to consider amending the approved budget. Mike? Yes. <clears throat> so I sent that out to you all, and I don't know how many questions you might have. There were two minor changes uh, to that. And the first one was to the liability insurance. What had occurred on that, there were two forms of the budget from 2017. And as we put the put everything together, uh, and as it was loaded into the system, one of the numbers was plugged into the system, and we went on about business, assuming that that was the correct number. However, doing some research, it was actually a little bit less. It was 84000 So we are amending that. Uh, back up to the higher level, which is what we've been operating off of. Uh, the second piece of that was on the education sales tax. This one did not need to be amended. Um, what had occurred on this one, there was a payment to the school district from December 2016. It was paid in January of 17, but instead of posting it to 16, it was posted in 17. So in order to keep our accounting correct and all the all the years payments to the school district we're amending that up to go ahead and pull there will actually be 13 payments in 17. Okay. so actually what you've done is you've increased the spending authority for those two funds that's right with this amendment that is correct okay and uh, actually that's just to cover expenses that's right for this for 2017 yep correct. okay yes all right Questions, Gary? I don't have any. I don't know. Okay. Entertain a motion then that we approve. You'll need to close the public hearing. Or close the public hearing. I'm public sorry. Comment, maybe. Or, yeah, is there any comment? Is there any comments from the public? I forgot to ask. <laughs> okay. It's hearing none. We'll close the public hearing then. Now we can entertain a motion then to approve the amended 2017 budget. I move to approve the amended 2017 budget as presented. I'll second the motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Item B is a public hearing to consider condemnation of 725 North Penn Avenue as dangerous and unsafe. Don? We're wanting to continue that for 30 days. Had, we've had a discussion with the homeowner, uh, been some progress on the house, but we really had a discussion about the garage, state of the garage, and uh, uh, want to continue that for 30 days after we've had a chance to get from him his <coughs> plan to tear that garage down or do something else with it. Okay. Is the owner here by any chance? He called me about. 4:55. Okay. I don't think he's planning on being here today. He was. He, I don't. He, I do not believe he did that he's not. planning okay, on was being not. here today. Okay. So you're comfortable with the, the land at for 30 days? Yes. Okay. Yes. There questions? No. Okay. <clears throat> no. Okay. 
entertain a motion then that we need to close the public uh, hearing. Close the public yeah. hearing. <laughs> Durn it. Yeah. Just adjourn, yeah, adjourn the it. hearing. Okay. To January 25th. Till uh, January 25th. Yes. yes. We don't. Do we need a motion? No, I don't believe so. If we're just yeah, adjourning it, do or in the do past. we? I make a motion that we adjourn the hearing yep. for 725 North Penn Avenue until January 25th, 2018. I'll second. Okay. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> Number five, item A for commission action is to consider directing the pl uh, planning commission to review and recommend text amendments relating to the following. Uh, staff has been going through some various um, different things that we think uh, need to be addressed and some of these we think the planning commission needs to review so we just like to submit these to the planning commission to see what they come up with and then bring it back to you guys for uh, consideration Can I do that? the one on tiny houses yes, is, sir. is that even addressed in the parts of Parts of the residential code, I believe, talks about minimum square footages of certain rooms and things like that that would probably apply to that. Um, we have some in the zoning, talks about a certain square foot per family of different things, but a lot of that's lot area coverage. So it's not really specifically addressed, but we think since that's kind of a thing now that we need to have a plan, so when that does occur that, you know, we have a way of addressing it. I think that's probably a good idea in my travels around southeast Kansas and Kansas mm -hmm. I've, I've seen a lot of communities that have started there are some tiny houses that are being built in some of these communities so mm -hmm. I think that's probably a good good one to look at um, and some of them are quite elaborate and expensive they're not necessarily cheap well, depending on some of the ones I mean there's it's it's really a wide array so yeah and I'm curious about the tiny houses Mm -hmm. term that mm -hmm. just means they're smaller than uh, 1800 that was pretty small <laughs> so, yeah that's time yeah. does uh, residential code define tiny home well the residential code that was recently adopted we looked at that and there's there's some things in there about minimum room sizes that could come into play for something like that um, but they, those are just in the new codes that were just adopted. So I just think all of that needs to be reviewed. But we were looking at this from the zoning perspective. And then we may need to go back and amend those residential codes that were just adopted if you guys determine you want to allow those so that, you know, there, there's an exemption for that. Yeah, because this square footage, you know, from what standards mm -hmm. used to be houses were, eight nine hundred square feet mm -hmm. and then we grew larger mm -hmm. so you know from today's standard an eight or nine hundred square feet is considered small but you know when you get to a tiny yeah home, i think these are smaller to, yeah. that's why that. i wonder if it's not defined in the building code mm -hmm. then we need to define it in somewhere there as well. and, right because i think in the building code usually like a restroom cfm for air change there's nothing required for a house, but uh, you know it's it's pretty open ended there. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to look at it, research what that definition. Yeah, I was thinking is. there was a room size. We found the residential code was it ten by twelve? It was somewhere around there. I can't remember exactly, but. Are they going to be mobile? Are they going to be permanent? You know, yes. Different things. Yeah. So, I think the planning. Planning Commission were to look at it, it kind of helps us kind of get an idea where, what, different things that we might be looking at. Because so, you may even want to do them with a PUD. But you, know, to be honest, our our look at this has been cursory right now. We haven't really gone in depth into this, so I think we need to look at lo other other local communities, communities statewide, and see what they've adopted, how they've gone about see, it. There's some so, models out there, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you could, you know, there some communities use them as infill housing others have them as kind of a PUD where you establish a certain specific zoning district for those they're in a specific location I mean there's a lot of different ways to look at it we just know that we've had a few inquiries and 
we, we will have more, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. and so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't see issues in general with the concept, but then, mm -hmm. you know, you've, you've talked about recreational vehicles and with mm -hmm. the description of, of people living in those and some questions about permanent mm -hmm. connections, but then now you start crossing into a mobile home. Mm -hmm. So if a tiny home has wheels, now does it, then where do you have the line? I want a mobile home, mm -hmm. but I can't have a mobile home because the code doesn't allow right. it, but I can have a tiny home on wheels. Yeah. Well, so and maybe there's you a make lot them, of that I can yeah. see. And maybe you make them take it off the wheels and yeah. permanently yeah. put a permanent foundation <laughs> or other residential structures you have to, to do that. So yeah. um, just like the mobile <laughs> homes um, were residential design manufactured homes, mm -hmm. as they're defined mm -hmm. in the code, you have to do certain things depending on what zone it's in. If it's an R1, it has to have an attached garage, and, and you have to do the skirting and the permanent foundation because those are more modular mm -hmm. than what you would call mobile homes. Yeah, that's um, where you're starting with definitions. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. yeah the definitions yeah, you know, and great. And then we do have important. a minimum width for manufactured homes that couldn't mm -hmm. kind of shoehorn a tiny house in that because it wouldn't <clears> meet the minimum <throat> width of a manufactured yeah. home. And so... Yeah. We know there's some things that we need to look at and address as this becomes uh, probably a more prominent issue. So. Yeah, I can I can see with cost of construction, mm -hmm. lifestyle mm -hmm. changes that there's mm -hmm. going to be a, a a lot of different systems, mm -hmm. even a, a pre-engineered house. Mm -hmm. And there's it's some com communities that embrace this and they have people retiring. Mm -hmm. They have the more fancy ones that they put in a certain area mm -hmm. and it's really kind of a neat little community mm -hmm. thing. So, I mean, I, I mean, it could be a positive thing. It could be. Yeah, with mm -hmm. a planned unit development or... Yeah, that's what uh, I thought, a, a PUD. Where yeah. you don't have to maintain your, your lawn mm -hmm. and you have all the snow mm -hmm. removal. It could kind be Kind of like somebody attractive. owning a mobile home park, but it'd be a tiny house park or something yeah. like that. You know, I mean, it could be could be really kind of a neat thing depending Little on how it was developed. Little candy canes and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Decorate them at Christmas. Have a little candy cane line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Other comments. So, I'd entertain a motion then that we direct the planning commission to review and recommend text amendments for those six items. Would there be a motion to that effect? Um, I make a motion that we direct the Planning and Zoning Commission to review the items referenced on the agenda to consider modifications to our current zoning codes. Okay. A second. And second. Okay. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And item six, wow. city board minutes. And uh, we're, we're approaching a record here. August 22nd, uh, Independence Historic Preservation Resource Commission. Minutes are in there along with the September 26, 2017 uh, Historic uh, Preservation Resource. Now, we do have some openings coming up we on that, Kelly. That have openings on the Planning Commission inside um, position. And then we also have some openings on the Historic Preservation and Resource Commission. And what the past practice has been is if somebody served over two years, over two full terms, then if we have other applicants that are eligible, then they can appoint those to those positions. But it's completely up to the, the mayor and the commission to agree. Um, and so we have two that served over two terms on the, the Historic Resource Commission and one that has not. Um, the Planning Commission, um, some of them are eligible for reappointment, but we have one that's moved out of town. So that one we will, I'll get with you and, and we'll see how, how, so far I don't have any applications. So if people will, uh, on the website that you can apply for those positions. Um, how many, two for the planning? I, I'll need to pull it up. I think there's two or three um, positions. But some of those are eligible for reappointment, and I think there's three on the historic yeah. um, one. Said, and yeah. one one has not served two full terms, but the other two have. But that that one's unique because you have to have so many because the city is a CLG, Certified Local Government. 
and you have to have so many people that have certain professional statuses to be able to maintain that CLG. So like an architect, an attorney, and a, a historian, yeah, which you have an archaeologist and a his history teacher or something like that. So, I mean, there's specific things in the code, and that's one of the questions on the application. Do you meet any of these criteria? And I have them listed out. So that one's a little bit, that's why some of them serve several terms, because it is hard to find people that meet those criteria. And that board is very active. I mean, you can see for the minute. So the second one that wasn't, didn't have as much on that agenda, because they didn't have a quorum. But usually, I mean, they meet monthly, and, and they review, like, the sign permits downtown and the building permits downtown and things to make sure that they fit the historic guidelines. And, you know, I mean, and, and I went to a training with them earlier this year. I mean, they're very active. Okay. So if we know anybody that it would be any, anyone that would be interested in serving on either the Planning and Zoning Commission or the Historic Preservation Resource Commission, then please have them contact us, fill out an application, and go online, uh, and, go online and, uh, and we'll get those filled. Out. Those are important boards for us. And the league is having uh, a training session for planning and zoning in January. Okay. Two of them, one in Bonner Springs, and I don't remember where the other one is. I know where Bonner Springs is. I'm here several times, but, um, yeah, okay. That's good. I have them, um, by the way, under news flashes. So if you go to the home page, you can go apply for the IHPRC here. There's the application and PNZ there. So it's right on the home page. So if anybody's interested, that's where you find it. It comes up, so it comes up. Yes, it's right on the home page under the news flash. Okay. So since our current mayor is bailing out a city commission, we can appoint <laughs> him to one of those, right? Well, you could. It'll be on the next agenda if we get any applications. I have two members on IHPRC that want to be reappointed that we've got. Well, in the past, we've advertised for, what, 30 days or something like that. Well, it just kind of, what we'll usually do is do a few weeks, and if we get no applications, we'll extend it. So you guys can determine how you wish to do that. Okay. They may all wish to be reappointed, and you may wish to do that. I don't know. It's up to you guys. It's up to the next mayor. <laughs> okay. Um, commission comments. Gary? I have none. None? So, no. I, I have one or a couple questions actually for Mike. The At the last, in our December 5th meeting when we were talking about City Hall and the, you know, what we do about it, that, um, that was December 5th. One of the things that I got to thinking about after the meeting was is that um, and it, thinking about what Craig had said about we would be there a couple years, I got to thinking about do we know what the actual cost is going to be for the new $16.3 million uh, city hall? And so I actually called and asked if we had had any, requested any information about what that might be. And so I asked Mike if, if Mike, can you talk about what sure. those numbers look like? And, it just briefly, and these are obviously estimates, and and they are more honed in on on what the from the operating standpoint, what the the utility cost would be, most specifically, because a lot of those things that whether it's at City Hall or or where we're at today, or even in in, in the new proposal, those things are going to transfer. You know, you're going to have janitorial costs. You're going to have maintenance agreements on equipment so those could go up and down some um, you know but one of the big things is we've seen with building D is the the high cost of the utilities there so we went back and we asked Andy if any of that information had been put together and it hadn't been he gave us some ideas and it, it looked like from a, a gas and electrical standpoint because the facilities will be uh, it'll have the most modern equipment and installations and everything through that renovation plus building the new building It'll be roughly around $105,000 for the year. Yeah, annually. And, you know, that could be more, that could be less. That was just his estimates on based on that type of square footage and the, and the improvements that would be made to 1916 City Hall. 
plus a brand new facility. Okay. So I thought that'd be valuable information. I also thought it'd be valuable to um, look at what the what the current costs are <clears throat> at Building D, mm -hmm. all right? And if we have that five hundred thousand dollars that's sitting there for uh, for mercy the improvements, which I would think future commission would want to invest in some sort of upgrade to help sell the building. If that's what you know, that's what the committee had suggested. And Mike, I know you had looked at some of those numbers. Yeah, so. and, and we've been working on that, and we we've had the RFP, and uh, just got with the uh, the mechanical guy this last week to go over the RFP with him to make sure that we understood those numbers, understood everything that we could anticipate from both phases. Understanding more of that, we've had an additional electrical engineer look at this proposal uh, and the ones that we received and make sure that that was in line, as well as whether or not he felt like, based on those phases, that we could achieve the savings that we thought we could recognize on it. And he's he's confirmed that. So now it's just a point of me finishing up the analysis so I can bring you all good information so that we can make a decision. Right now it looks like uh, looking at doing the phase one, which is significantly less dollars, uh, from the electrical side would save us about 25% up there uh, through that phase one of what we're experiencing right now, just on the electrical side. Couple that in with um, what we're saving on the gas by going with the Greenbush deal that'll start up in January. You know, we're, we're looking at saving, you know, sixty to $70,000 a year right there off of where we're at right now, which is running a little over $200,000 on the electrical and about 70000 on the gas. So we would be knocking that down to about two hundred five, somewhere in that ballpark neighborhood. I'll have a little more firm numbers when we is that, present. Is that including the lease from uh, St. John's? No, that, that, that's just straight cost. So if you take the con into consideration the lease, oh, sorry about that, you know, that would knock off another $100,000 of it. But you can't use your lease money to offset 100% utilities because you still no. got <clears throat> maintenance. You know, if you take the 100000 and put the utilities, you still got to come up with maintenance of their space. Too. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. So no, it's, it's misleading. That's how, <clears throat> no. you know, from day one we've been <clears throat> told 143 for no. everything and it's only going to be 43000 and, you know, we haven't had a realistic number that 205 that, that would just include the utility cost mm -hmm. you know we do because there's, there's additional cost on top of that you know we have insurance we have uh we have janitorial we have uh exterminators coming in we have just regular maintenance right. we have maintenance agreements on things so that's that's not the the whole cost of, of operating the utilities yeah, yeah just so looking at the strictly apples, apples that yeah. would be yeah. almost an apples to apples Right. Okay. That's correct. So that, I mean, that just gives the future commission something to look at as far as, uh, because, you know, if, as Craig said, I don't, personally, I don't see why we'd wait to do the upgrade for the electrical at the uh, Building D. And, uh, and as we talked about in the December 5th meeting, this is that there are other pressing issues that, could be prioritized as more important than really jumping to that real quick. So uh, it's just something I happen to think about afterwards, so I thought I'd investigate it, find out what the numbers were. There you go. Well, and also on the $43,000, Leonard, I think that was the what your firm was presented on June 30th, correct? Well, we were presented different. Yeah. Initially, was in a November meeting where we were presented utility numbers and in, in the options we've been presented so much mm -hmm. well, numbers I, that haven't been correct well after the article in the paper with the graph in there i went back and looked and that was from the june 30th meeting i believe is that where you got that and um then july 26th is when i realized when i went through the utilities that that meter was missing and i did notify all the commissioners that i thought that that utilities could be off anywhere from 75 to 125,000 just roughly looking at it 
because the central energy plant meter wasn't included in the data provided by Mercy mm. that Sean used to put that together. So, I mean, we did notify the commission less than a month later that that number was incorrect on July 26th. And July 28th was the meeting that they decided to move out of the building. And so that information was known at that time. So I just want to clarify that. Yeah, just in, you know, all the presentations we've never had, here's 100% accurate or even close to accurate operating costs. That's, that's, and it, that's have you seen? Important. Mm -hmm. That's why we're taking our time on this, because I, I want to make yeah. sure that Anything that I put out there is yeah. it, it, it's good, and you all have good information to make decisions. Have you seen much change with mm -hmm. imaging on the electric bill? Is that just one month? Yeah, no, because really they haven't been operating it all that much anyway. So just to having it okay. up and running, I think they were only averaging about one one a week. I don't know; that could be misinformation there. But at the same time, that thing is still. It's still operational, and until they completely take it down, we're not going to notice anything there at all. But the, it has to be the, cooled at the same level, whether they're running it. It, it, it is still operational. But when they operate it, that's when the demand increases when they're running mm -hmm. an image. It, it so could if it, it's idle, it's not our, it's constant. It is constant. But yeah. when they operate and it's energized, it raises and puts a peak. Yes. And then we're built upon a peak. Yes. And that's see, where we're going to see. See, that once the demand peak charges, goes away, yeah. it's going to help us a lot. Yeah, that, yeah. Those demand charges is what you're talking yeah. You know, those demand charges are. And those are what's really been killing us through this. And, and when those and one numbers were put together, that's when 40% of the building was being demolished. And yeah. it, it was really tough, I think, to estimate, estimate that. Plus, he didn't have all the data and didn't realize he didn't have all the meters. So, I mean, it was not an intentional thing to intentionally mislead anyone. That's, that was not yeah. the case. Well, you know, we had a mechanical engineer mm -hmm. looking at it, too, and it's disappointing that mm -hmm. you pay a professional in that yeah, I category, heard, yeah. and, and then he comes back with a major, oh, yeah, by the way. Yeah, and I rewatched that June 30th one, and Sean even talked about he had checked the numbers with his MEP, and they didn't catch it either. So it, it was not an intentional thing. It was just a, you know, like I said, they didn't have all the data. 40% of the building was being, you know, taken down. So, I mean, it was really hard for them yeah. to make that estimate. But it was an error. And like I said, I caught it when I was going through the historical Westar data. I pulled from Mercy. I found out that there was that additional meter. And I notified you guys the day mm -hmm. I found it and told you, hey, there's a problem mm -hmm. here. And I, you know. So we did tell you guys as soon as we knew, and like I said, that was July 26th, less than a month later, and then July 28th was the meeting when, yeah, when the know, after decision that we, was made to, to move staff. So we I just wanted to clarify a couple that. times. So mm -hmm. what is our accurate number then? Because even you know, you mean based on what it is now? No, no that's going to come up later. When we get into but, it. Uh, Mike, you said you were figuring a 25 percent savings. Yes, weren't. Weren't they actually talking about more than that? Yeah, and, and, and I, I think when this first came up, I think a number of 66, if you do everything, phase one and phase two, we, we've broken it out now into two different phases, but if it's all done, the first numbers that we heard were 66. We pulled those back to 50%, but because we're only looking at doing phase one right now, which is substantially cheaper than phase two, getting more bang for the buck, that, that would pull that down to 25%. So you're being real conservative. Is, yeah. and, and, and it could be more. I mean, there again, with these meters that are a part of phase one, uh, where we can, it'll tie into our computer system. It'll let us know when we're nearing peak demand so that we can start phasing things down that are running in the building and even kick in the generator if necessary to keep us below those demand charges. These meters are going to help, help us manage that. Uh, to ensure we stay below that. So by the time they shut everything down with the imaging center, we could be looking at significantly more than 25% with just the phase one investment. But I'm only looking at 25% right now. And I do think the first time Steve Makins came here, he thought it could be up to, I'm thinking he said up to 75% on the electrical, which has been, yeah, which, which when they had, Andy had his guy review, he said, even if he did it all, he did, he thought that was really a little high. So I think he, 
it seemed like the report was even pushing 50 percent mm -hmm. was skeptical on, on yeah. that much but so we're being ultra yeah. conservative yeah with our estimates and hopefully it will be more than that but we don't want to count on that but you know to to use a generator to try and cut down on now you got fuel to add back into it which is going to be less efficient you, yeah, uh, from looking at everything that we know it we typically only get in that situation most specifically when in the hot months during the summer or where the chillers are running because right now we we can't control most of the outside vents so the chillers are running um, we can't pull in that colder air to offset that so that's that's going to be part of that phase one that'll help control that as well but i'm 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 gonna get an expert in here that can talk much much better about that than i can yeah you got Got a lot of, a lot of issues with a big system with the chillers sized for 150,000 square feet, and you're trying to do half that area, and you can't idle a chiller down, and you almost got a problem of cooling too quick. Then there, there's a lot of inert problems with size to square footage that you're doing that you just can't overcome. Yeah, I didn't, and again, I a lot of that stuff is over my head, that's so I'm, I'm going to let the well, expert that's why talk hire on an that. Expert. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Or another expert. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't have any uh, public concerns, There's none. so that means that we I might have missed it. The record <laughs> six oh two. So I'd entertain a motion then that we adjourn. I'll make a motion we adjourn. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And uh, Happy New Year, everybody. 2018. Full of promise. The next meeting will be on a Monday. Yep, that's right. The January next meeting will be Monday, January 8th. It's going to be off our normal schedule there.